Welcome to Meeple Station, and today we're going to be doing a gameplay of Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. So Professor Evil has stolen a whole bunch of ancient artifacts throughout the history of time that the world has ever seen. And so we are going to be playing a fully cooperative game um, that we are trying to break into the Citadel of Professor Evil's to steal back that uh, precious history, those precious items from history. Well, here we go. Here is the Citadel of Professor Evil. And as you can see, there are several rooms in the Citadel um, that, um, that we have to enter into. And we have the treasures, three treasures that we have to start off with. And so we have this treasure right here in the library, a treasure here in the parlor, and finally, a treasure way up here in the vault room. And so as you can see, these treasures, like this one here, is Da Vinci's Notebook. And they have the requirements of what switches in the Citadel need to be off, so that way it is safe for us to be able to steal Da Vinci's Notebook. Or, we have the Crystal Skull. And the Crystal Skull has three requirements that we need that we have to turn off the saws, the data pad, and also lasers that are in the that are in the citadel. Once those are all turned off, then it is safe for us to take the crystal skull back for the world to have. And and there are a whole bunch of locked doors um, that we have to pass through, and and just kind of like in any uh, cooperative game, we have we have about three actions that we can take, and we are able to enter in through windows to be able to get into the to be able to get into uh, the citadel we can either start in the library in the gallery or all the way at the top in the ballroom and when we sneak in through uh, these windows right there so we have our we have our standees right here have our characters picked out for a two-player game and in this two-player game we are going to be playing the characters of Nathan Goodspeed and Leroy Johnson and each of them have their own very own special abilities like Nathan Goodspeed is very good at different types of movements and Leroy Johnson is very good at manipulating the switches throughout the throughout the Citadel and as you can see they have uh, this is their very own deck of special actions that they can take and we always get two options, uh, two options that we can choose from every turn. Um, same for Leroy, J J Leroy Johnson. And um, and then the a big aspect of the game deals with this central clock right here. At the end of our turns, um, we are going to be rolling three dice, and these three dice can determine of how fast we really do need to capture these. Um, these treasures right here Because as you can see these treasures are marked so like this blue one for the Da Vinci's notebook is marked right here on the clock that we have 30 minutes Until this if this marker this black marker ever reaches to this blue chip on the clock well, then that means that professor evil has um, Has locked away Da Vinci's notebook for good. It is no longer stealable and um, and so it is possible that these dice can manipulate the the actual treasure chip to go backwards closer towards this uh, black marker, or this black marker will um, move forward. And these dice also uh, manipulate the movement of Professor Evil himself. He is in the Citadel with us. He starts off in the laboratory, which is right here, and this is Professor Evil. And his standee, so he'll start there. And as he goes, walks throughout the, the citadel, he is going to be locking doors back up, and he's going to be turning on the switches. And, uh, okay, so let's get down to it. Let's get into the gameplay. So like I said, we can uh, start, we have three actions. Um, we can move, um, move into rooms. We can unlock doors, uh, turn on or off switches if we wish. And... Uh, uh, the other action is we can save and rescue a precious artifact. 
Well, okay, so we, uh, I determined that Nathan Goodspeed is, yeah, Nathan Goodspeed is going to go first. And I think what we should do, because this is the least difficult uh, one to accomplish right now, because if you can tell, we have, we have to turn off the cameras and the data pad. Well, this data pad is right here, and as you can see, it is already turned off. And there's only one data pad, which is what this number indicates. The number one indicates that there's only one data pad in the whole Citadel, and that's already turned off. So we're good there. We just need to turn off all the cameras. And so there are a couple cameras in the Citadel. One of them is right here, right in the room with the professor. But luckily in the game setup, it already started on off. And there are two cameras, switches. And so the other one that we need to turn off is in the ballroom right here. And this one is activated. If it's not on the off side, then that is activated and we need to turn it off. So we need to be able to get into the ballroom and switch off this camera. Okay. So Nathan Goodspeed, let's see, let's see. What should he do? So he's going to go ahead and use his first action to move into the building because we both start out on the outside of the building. And he's going to move into the building. His first action is going into the ballroom. His second action is, because remember, we, need a, we, need a, we want to capture the Da Vinci notebook first. We need to turn off the cameras and the data pad is already off. So this is the last camera that we need to switch off. So this second action is switch off the camera. It is turned off now. So now everything is available for us to be able to get. All we need to do is just get into the library and steal back Da Vinci's notebook. And the whole object of the game, I failed to, <laughs> to mention it, the whole object of the game is for us to be able to save, successfully save four treasures, four of these artifacts, before we lose four treasures to the professor himself. Okie dokie. So we have done two actions so far. And for his last action, um, let's see here. His last action, he'll go ahead and, let's see, let's see, might as well maybe unlock a door? Yeah, he'll go ahead and unlock a door, and so these little black markers here represent the doors, so he's going to go ahead and unlock the door that was right here as his final action. So we take off the door there, it is unlocked, free for us to move in there. And then lastly, he's going to use one of his cards if he wants to. So here's what the ability cards look like. So the two that Nathan Goodspeed has to choose from are these two. We can spend this card um, as, a, as a free action. It doesn't count as an action. We get to always have three actions, and then if we want, we can spend one of our cards. So you can switch locations with another player or choose two players. Um, you may choose yourself. So in a two-player game, it would obviously be just uh, Nathan and Leroy Johnson that would be selected. So choose two players. Each chosen player may move to an adjacent room, even through a locked door. All right. I think, hmm, should we spend one of those? Because Leroy isn't even on the field yet. He's not even in the Citadel yet. And once we, if we, if we choose one, then the other one is discarded, and then we have to choose, we have to draw two more for the next turn. Hmm. Yeah, I think let's go ahead and go ahead and just use this one right here. So, unfortunately, there's not two two players um, out here on on the on the in the citadel. Just uh, Nathan Goodspeed so far. So he's going to go ahead and spend this, and he gets to move to an adjacent room, even through a locked door. And he's going to move into the trophy room right here. He's just going to prepare himself, even though this door is locked right here. Well. Even through locked doors, we can move through it. He's going to get himself ready in this trophy room to switch off this saw switch right here. So now, both of these are discarded. And then two new ones get picked up for, next, for his next turn. And now, it is the end of his turn. So now we have to roll 
we have to roll these dice, which will manipulate the, the clock or the movement of the Professor Evil himself. So we're gonna go ahead and roll. Okay, so now this means that this black die, since it only has one uh, clock face on it, that means we have to move this black marker forward one space. There is another side on here that has two clock faces on it, and that would mean you would advance the black marker two spaces, and that's pretty scary because then that's even closer to losing a treasure for good. And then this manipulates the movement of Professor himself. So he, there's uh, two chevrons on this die, so that means he's gonna move two spaces through the red carpets. So as you can see, there are um, carpets in every single room. So like there is a red carpet right there, a green carpet, and then also a blue carpet. So that means that Professor is going to walk through here on this way into the vault, which is right here. And then he's also going to move downward into the cellar. So he's going to follow these red carpets, two spaces. So he's going to go one, he's in the vault. And now this, whenever he, whatever door he crosses through, will lock it if it's not already locked. Well, that one's already locked. So he can move through there. Through there. And, uh, and then also, he also switches on any of his machine switches. So now this saw is turned back, to, turned back on and activated. And then he also moves onto this red carpet for his last space to be moved and moves into the cellar. If this door was locked right here, we would lock it back up. It was already locked. And then since he enters into here, he switches back on his, his lock mechanism machine. Whoops, there we go. Just tossing Professor around a little bit. Okay, so now he ends his turn in the cellar. And if he ever enters into the room of where you are, you get sent back out of the building, out of the citadel, because you don't want to get caught by Professor Evil. Evil. Okie doke. So now it is finally Leroy Johnson's turn. And Leroy is going to go ahead and start his turn. Well, there's a window right here, so he can start his turn in the library. So this is his first action. He moves into the library and... Luckily, this camera right here is still turned off. We got lucky. If we had roll, rolled a blue space, well, that would have meant that the professor would have moved into the ballroom and switched the camera back on, but he didn't do that. He went this way. So, the camera is still off there, and the camera is still off in his laboratory. If he ever moves back into his laboratory, it would have turned back off. And the data pad is turned off as well. So, we moved in here as one action. Our second action, we are going to save Da Vinci, uh, Da Vinci's notebook. And so we get to put that in the saved category. That's one out of four treasures saved now. And so now we remove the blue chip off of that treasure and this blue chip off of the clock. And we have to draw a new treasure and we need to save the Dead Sea Scrolls, which requires for all the saws to be turned off and all the lasers on the whole map. And we're going to find out where we have to put, where we get to put the Dead Sea Scrolls. And we have a whole deck of cards for locations. So we're going to go ahead and flip this over. And this is going to go in to the entrance hall, which is right here. So we put the blue chip back on. We'll put the blue chip back on the circle. And it, just remember, it says 45. And then how we determine where this blue chip goes on to the clock is we go 45 minutes ahead of where the black marker is. And so we got 10, 20, 30, 40, and 5. That's where the blue chip will go. So once this black marker reaches back to here, then the then the blue this blue um, treasure would be gone forever. Loki doke. So we have still one more action because uh, Leroy moved into here as one action, stole back the uh, the Da Vinci notebook, 
And so he still has one more action left. What should he do? Um, let's see, which one do we want to go for next? So we have lasers and saws right here. Oh, well this one requires, well this one requires um, a saw for all the saws to be turned off, all the cameras and the data pad to be turned off. Well, we still have the cameras and the data pad off. We just need to get the saws off and we'll be able to steal back the crown jewels. These royal crown jewels back from the professor. So let's see, which saws do we have that are still on? So there are three saws. So here's one of them. It's in the vault. And then the other one is already in the trophy room which is where uh, our other partner is, Nathan. And that's, so both of those are still activated. They're not on the off switch. And then the last saw is down here in the entrance hall. Oh boy, and they are all still on. Hmm. Let's think here. Well, none of these treasures require, um, none of these treasures require green switches to be turned on. And we have this ability here. Well, let's see what our abilities are for Leroy. Let's take, let's, let's take a look. So we can flip a switch on anywhere in the, city, in the castle to unlock two doors anywhere in the castle. We would have to turn a switch on, but we get to unlock two doors, which is pretty valuable. Or choose two players, and you may choose yourself. Each chosen player may flip a switch off in their location. Hmm. So if we maybe flip, so if we use this card, we could flip this switch off. This one is already off. That's pretty nifty. And then that will leave his turn to be able to t turn off this saw switch. So let's go ahead and use this card right here. So we'll go ahead and spend this one. So uh, both of us would be able to turn off the switches if they are not already off. So this gets switched off. And... Yep, so that's it. So that's it. So those, both of these get spent and get put into the discard pile. And these will be available for his next turn. Right there. And now, he still has, so he moved into the, into the library, stole the thing back, used one of his cards for free, still has one more action left. Well, he's going to go ahead and prepare himself to enter into this entrance hall to be able to turn off this final switch, uh, one, of the, well, one of the three saw switches. So we still have this one to turn off and that one to turn off to be able to steal these crown jewels back. So he unlocks this door. Perfect. Now, unfortunately, it's time to roll those dice at the end of our turn. So we're gonna go ahead and roll them. All right, so Professor Evil moves one space towards the green. And then the marker, the black marker on the clock is moved, advance one space. So we advance this one space, and then Professor Evil moves one space on through the green room. And oh no, oh no, check this out. So here is the green space, the green carpet that he's gonna move through, which means he's gonna move up into the vault. And now he is in the vault room Oh, nuts. So that means we can't switch off this, we can't turn off this, uh, this saw switch anymore until he leaves the room. Ah, okay. Well, let's see what we can do still. Um, think, think, think. So we rolled. So now it's back to Nathan Goodspeed's turn. Well, let's see what his, what his abilities are. See if that's going to help us at all. So we got to move to the same room as the treasure, as a treasure or unlock all doors in two rooms um, you visit this turn. All right, well, hmm, let's think here. Well, now we can't turn off the saws, and so this one requires saws to be, all the saws to be turned off, and the crown jewels require all the saws to be turned off, and the crystal requires all the saws to be turned off. And uh, well, I'm trying to think. Well, it doesn't specify. Well, if you ever move in to the same room as a tr as a as the professor, like 
Even if we use this one, if we move into this room, that's in the same room as the professor, we'll just get automatically booted out of the castle anyway. Because it doesn't indicate that we can move there even with the even if the professor's in the same room. Some cards indicate that. And this one does not. So I don't think we can move into the same room by using that power. Darn it. Well, let's think. Um Wow, well, I'm trying to think here. So I think we'll go ahead and spend this action right here, or this card right here. We got to unlock all doors in two rooms you visit this turn. So that will discard both of these. And so we are in this room, so all of these doors get unlocked, which is pretty nice and valuable. That's three doors, saves us a lot of actions. And then we'll go ahead and move into this room. So that's our first action right there, and that'll unlock all these doors. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and move back into the trophy room, hoping that, um, hoping that the professor is going to go ahead and move out of this room, maybe towards this way or down that way, but hopefully not into the actual trophy room where Nathan is right there. So that's his turn, and he gets to draw back his special action cards back up to two for next turn, and he has to roll the dice. We'll go ahead and roll. He moves. No way. So he moves. The professor moves one space towards the blue. Oh, man. Wait, wait. Nope. Never mind, sorry, I was looking wrong. Well, here's the blue carpet right here. So he's gonna move out this way. I was looking at this blue carpet thinking he's gonna move this way. That's not the case at all. So he's gonna move out this way towards this blue carpet, just one space. And also, we rolled one clock face, which puts it to the 15 minute mark. And as you can see, there is a special icon right here and whenever that special icon is shown, we get to flip over our main character card, which gives us another additional ability. And so this gives us the top, the top two abilities. Uh, these top abil this top ability gives us a continual effect for us. And then this bottom ability, we can choose to use this bottom ability. It would flip the card back over, losing us the continual effect, but it is a very powerful action, or it is a very powerful um, ability that we could use. So let's look, see what we have. So, oops, excuse me. So for um, Nathan, so it says before, this is the continual effect, before you take actions, you may always move to a room adjacent to the professor. So before your, your whole turn, you can choose to move um, all the way to an adjacent room of the professor. So like if... If it was his turn and he had this continual effect, well, he could choose, if he wanted, to move to an adjacent room with the professor. Well, this is an adjacent room, but he's already there. Oh, no, sorry. This is not an adjacent room. Uh, the vault is an adjacent room, so he can move there for free, or to this room, the, the ballroom, or he can move to the workshop for free as well. So he can move all the way from here across the map to right here as his continual effect at the beginning of every turn. Or he can spend, um, if he wants to go ahead and spend this um, one-time one ability, it says, in addition, on your turn, you may flip this tile to take any number of extra move actions this turn. You can move any number that you want to. But if there's doors locked, that would interrupt the movement. And that would end, uh, end that and this effect right here. And then we have Leroy Johnson and his uh, a continual... Uh, effect is you might always move into the room with the professor and never flee the castle if the professor moves into your location. So even if the professor is in Leroy's spot or if Leroy moves into the room with the professor, it doesn't matter. And then his one-time special um, ability would be in addition to your training maybe to flip this tile to flip off a switch anywhere in the castle. Very nice. Holy smokes, which one should we do? 
Mm, I think we should choose to um, leave this one flipped over. You can always choose one out of these two to leave flipped over. So Leroy um, will continue as normal while this, uh, while Nathan has this continual effect until he uses this ability. There we go. Well, all right, all right. So let's see here. So the professor uh, just moved, so it is back to Leroy's turn. All right. Well, what is Leroy? What are his cards? His cards, his special abilities this round um, are you can flip a switch off in a room adjacent to the professor or flip a switch off in a room with a treasure. Both of those are equally as valuable. But let's use this one because this one is excellent. This is perfect. So flip off a switch in a room adjacent to the professor. So if we choose this one, well, the professor evil is right here. Well, guess what? Where this saw is turned on and activated in the vault, this is a, an adjacent room to the professor. So we spend this card right here, and we can go ahead and flip this switch off. And then that leaves us, that leaves it available for, for us to, um, excuse me, I'm having a brain fart right now. So that leaves us available so that way on his turn, he'll be able to just go in here and flip this switch off and all the saw switches will be falling off. All right, so we'll go ahead and spend this one and this goes into the discards. So this gets turned off. Still have three actions left. And what he's going to do... Oh, you know what? Oh, but the, the one that we're trying to steal is up here. So actually, let's, let's actually use this one. So we'll forget about, we'll forget about doing this one. Um, so this is still activated. And we'll actually go ahead and flip, off a, uh, flip, off, flip a switch off in a room with a treasure. Well, this one is a treasure room. So let's go ahead and flip this one off. And then for Leroy's turn, he still has three actions. Remember, this card is for free. His uh, ability is used for free. And so he's going to go ahead and go one, two, and three. Oh, I thought I was going to be able to steal the treasure. That's okay. That's still a pretty good turn. Well, all right. So now that was Leroy's turn. And all the switches are off. And all the cameras are off. And now, and also the data pad is turned off. So all three of these are turned off. And so this is ready and primed to be able to be stolen. Okay. Well, now is the end of Leroy's turn. We have to turn this, um, roll the dice. So he's going to move um, two spaces. The professor can move two spaces towards the green um, carpet, and this gets um, this gets advanced one space. And then Leroy, or not Leroy, but the professor moves um, two spaces towards the green. So here's the green carpet right here. So that's one space. Um, the switch is already on, all the doors are already still locked, and then he moves again for his second action or second space towards this way into the greenhouse, which switches this back on to be activated, but doesn't foil our plans at all, and this door would have been locked, but it's already locked. All right, all right. So now it is. Um, our friend Nathan Goodspeed's turn, and all his cards, um, his cards this turn are the professor cannot lock doors this turn, or flip on a switch anywhere in the castle in order to move into any room. And let's see, we'll then use this one right here that whenever we roll the dice. For this, at the end of uh, his turn, the professor can't lock the doors. Um, cannot lock the doors, even if they would be locked. So if he, if the professor moves up towards this way in the ballroom, this door would not be locked, even though it is unlocked. So we're going to use that one. Just remember that we spent it. And well, let's use this passive ability right here. Before to you, before you take actions, you may always move to an adjacent room of the professor. 
and well, actually that doesn't benefit us right now. So we won't we won't use that anyway. Because the professor moved, I thought the, I was thinking the professor is still right here. So we'll take our first action one. Second action, we get finally get the crown jewels back in our possession, and uh, all of those are turned off. The data pad, the camera, and all the saws were turned off. Well, we can steal this back. And now, we have successfully stolen back two items out of the four that we need to steal to win the game. And I think that gives you guys a very good idea of what it is like to play Citadel, or Professor Evil, and the Citadel of Time. And, um, and of course, we didn't get quite to see it, but it is very, it can be very, uh, it can happen very quickly that, um, that when you roll these dice, that because not always the the professor doesn't always move. Sometimes if you roll one of these clock, uh, this ten clock face, well this means that the red marker gets moved backwards ten ten minutes. So that would have meant that this would have would have moved backwards like that, even closer to the black marker. And remember, if that color, if this color chip ever crosses paths with the black marker. It is stolen back by the professor and locked into his vault forever. And uh, so we didn't get to see that happen, but it is very easy for it to happen. Sometimes you're on a very big time crunch and trying to get use all your actions um, that you need uh, effectively so that we can steal these treasures back. Anyway, we'll talk about more about that in final thoughts. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, with the gameplay for Professor Evil in the Citadel of Time. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you at the next video for final thoughts of this board game.